By the way, Steven has wanted to do the show several times and I'm writing a TV show pitch for him. But this last week, we wrote four new pitches. One for Steven. Steven, he needs to, you know, he th- he, he he's doing this real like Logan Paul, Jake Paul thing, acting like a psycho, where he basically just calls me on Thursday nights at like 10.30. He's like, hey man, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah, I just want to talk to you, you know? Hey, let's do, a, let's do a live stream. And I'm like, dude, I do things. What's your schedule? And you know what this guy says to me? This psychopath. Coffeezilla, Stephen, Coffeezilla, the patron saint of our channel. He says, schedule? <laughs> oh no, my schedule is the will of God. Basically, he's so obsessed with his YouTube channel that he just does whatever he needs to do next in the YouTube channel. Nothing else, no schedule. The only one who can impose a schedule on this man is his wife, and he's like, well, with her, her I have to. And then twice a year for my family, I have to give them one. And then, uh, you know, two or three times a year for if there's a wedding, then I gotta go, I'll go. But his schedule is just God's will. That's what he's doing. That's karma yoga. That's actually very high vibration. It's very karma yoga of him, very in the moment. But at the same time, it's like, don't be a psycho, dude. You're calling me at 10.30 on Thursday. Oh, uh, hey, hey man, you wanna hang out? Let's hang out, let's do a podcast. It's like, dude, no, I, I can't just go five hours right now. Like I'm at a show, like, what are you talking about? Where's your schedule? Oh, I don't know. Oh, schedule. You mean, how can we control the will of God? That's what people are like when they don't have a schedule. What are you thinking? So anyway, that's one pitch that we're writing. That pitch is incredible. Once that's done, I think it'll be done in another week or so. It's so righteous and so up his alley. It's basically an offer he can't refuse. It's so high on the righteousness scale that once I send it to him, I'll wait a week. I'll be like, did you read it? He probably won't read it right away. So whatever, two weeks, he'll read it. What week, week and a half, two weeks, he'll read it. And then I'll say, I'll say, I'll say, when are we shooting it? Because... I know that it's so righteously in his wheelhouse of karmas. I know that this, when he reads the pitch, he will say, or I will have to just remind him. I'll just have to poke him once or twice and say, and say, hey, I gave you the work of God. So when will it be done? When will God's will be done? Because that's how righteous the project is. It's like he has to do it. It's about MLMs. It's like a comedy. It's like movie about MLMs. Very similar to a show that he loves. It's like everything's perfect on it. It's got all the jokes of all the shit, all the psychos that we've had to work with. PHP and all this shit. So it's got all the jokes, it's got everything, and it's such a righteous project that he's gonna look at it and he's basically gonna say like, yes, it, it is God's will, it must be done. And so that's one pitch that I've, that I've written, my pass on it, my writing partner's looking at it. But then another pitch we wrote, another, and then there's two more that I don't, it doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't really make sense to talk about them right now. But then the other pitch we wrote, this pitch that we wrote, I told him about it last week, and he was like, oh, I have a contact at Bell 5 and they're giving money for stuff like this. Let's just do a meeting. Okay, cool. I go on the meeting. I go on the meeting. I meet this woman, Lynn Harvey. She's like a comedy producer legend. She's made these banger TV, banger TV shows. And then apparently her dad was some kind of comedy development guy at the CBC, which is like a major network here, the government owned network. But then she's just made all these shows. She's, we told her about us and she was laughing, whatever. And then she was like, oh, so do you want me to tell you about me? <laughs> she just says, oh my God, brilliant. She goes, do you want me to tell you about me? me? Well, let me tell you about me then. She goes through these list of shows she's made. Bangers, dude. She made this show called Jono Vision. So funny, dude. It was, you guys wouldn't know it. It's a Canadian show. It's like a random Canadian show. Ryan Reynolds used to be on it before he, oh no, Ryan Gosling used to be on it. Before he was famous, he was in Canada. But it was like so funny. And it's actually a good show. She made that. She made like Sharon Lois and Bram. All these banger shows she made. And she's just like, this is hilarious, guys. I really, I want to work on it. And we haven't even sent her a pitch yet. We haven't even written the pitch yet. We just have like rough notes on a pitch. Pitch it to her. She's just into it. I come downstairs. The producers on the show that I'm working on, they're sitting in the thing. I'm like, yeah. They're like, oh, so how was your meeting? I was like, yeah, yeah. I just met with uh, uh, just pitch a show. It was, uh, it was really good, actually. Do you guys know Lynn Harvey? And they were like, oh. Lynn Harvey. They knew who it was. But here's the bonus thing I want to tell you. Yesterday, I, day before yesterday, we shot the episode that I wrote. I show up on set. I'll recap it. We show up. We, we wrote. We did the episode that I wrote. We show up on set. The director, got, uh, genius, he's a genius, you could say in hindsight. He goes, I wrote the script. He goes, hey, everyone. So the script is a little light. So if we can add some jokes, that'd be great. He says this. He's obviously joking. But I'm such an idiot that I'm like, oh, my God. I got to write more jokes. And even the girl who plays my wife, she goes, don't say that to him right now. Oh my God. Here's the thing. The character that I had to play, he's very like scaredy guy. Like in that moment, I was like scared. And then also we came up with a bunch of new jokes. So this megalomaniac psycho, no wonder he owns 50 goddamn Emmy. He has 50 freaking Emmys. The psycho, he just manipulates me into like, hey, yeah, the script's a little light. We're gonna need more on this. He's joking. I don't know. Anyway, we shoot it. Great day. Finish shooting it. Great day, but I was kind of feeling weird the whole day. I was feeling a little bit like, oh my God, is there not enough jokes in this? What the hell? 
I'm like looking at the page count, whatever. I'm like, this is 12 when I sent it? 14 when I sent it? I don't know what I'm thinking. Next day, we're on set. Yesterday, we're on set. And the woman who does the hair and make, like there's a hair and makeup duo. And they're just doing stuff. And they're like, oh my God, the yesterday's episode was so funny. It was my favorite. I can't believe the thing. You guys were making us laugh so much. And I'm like, oh. that was repressed a little bit the day before. Then it, oh. I love, and then, and then I got to do a bonus flutter because I said, oh. thank you. And then I said, I wrote it. And she was like, no, you didn't write it. And I'm like, no, I wrote that episode. She's like, you wrote it. And then someone else goes, you wrote it. I'm like, yeah, the AD. I'm like, my food is the work of God. Look it up. And she's like, she looks it up. She's like, oh yeah, he wrote it. And they're like, he wrote it. This guy, that's great what you did. And, and I was like, yep. Yeah. And I have a meeting with uh, someone at lunch too to sell another show. And they were very proud, very happy. I actually sold a show to that company too. I sold another show to that company that we're still working on. Anyway, it's fine. Little inside the business for the community. You know what I'm saying? And if you know anyone who's trying to, if you know any single moms and if you know it, or if you know anyone who's trying to break into this business, tell them you gotta, or doing art in general, doing any kind of art, any kind of art, they should be watching this because if you think about the inspirations I've given to the most, to an artist, very important. And you know, the rest of you, even if you're not an artist, don't think that I'm not talking to you. You should, you can live your life artistically. Your life can be lived in a high vibration, in a loving, artful way. And that's how we're meant to live. And that's what, uh, yeah, no, no, that is, that is what it is to have a high vibration, to be righteous. It's not to make a million dollars. It's to be loving moment to moment. It's crazy to think about it. And it is to let, let each thing that you do in each moment be just that expression of God, to be a channel of God, bringing it in. You want to bring in high levels at all times. <sighs> and that's what I've been doing all week, y'all. That's what I've been doing all week. And the moral of the story is, you are loved because you are loved. Such is the nature of love and kindness. Okay? So now that I've done my karmas, make sure you do your karmas. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, and sign up for meditation. Ascension is upon us, foolish. Sign up for meditation immediately. Ha! Am I still here?